So um, we've, we've taken some time to share a little bit about this beautiful practice of metta or loving kindness uh, practice, loving kindness meditation. And it really is a practice. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to just take a few minutes to tell a story about my experience with metta. Um, it was quite a journey over many, many months. I was raised by um, Caribbean parents. My father is Jamaican and my mother's Cuban. And for many people in the Caribbean, owning property is the height of success. That if a person owns property, they have really achieved success. My parents came to this country with nothing. And so they worked very hard and always instilled in me the importance of owning property. So when, when it came time and I could actually buy a house, I felt very proud of myself that I had finally accomplished this big objective. The house was very small by, I guess, American standards. Um, it was about 900 square feet, but it was in a very um, uh, up and coming neighborhood. Um, in New, on the East Coast in New Jersey, not far from uh, Manhattan. And um, the town had, had become quite um, gentrified over the years. The, the older people were pushed out and new young people came in. And I bought the house just at the time when there was a turning over of the new people coming in and the older people holding on to their property. The house that I bought was next to a fairly ramshackle house. Um, the, my neighbors in this ramshackle house were the DeSalvis. They had lived in the house for more than 60 years. The mother and father, the father had worked as an assemblyman uh, on the GM General Motors plant uh, on the, the assembly line, a hardworking man, and he raised uh, six children in that 900 square foot house. The mother was a housewife. Um, it was a very troubled family. Uh, I would be in my house and where houses were attached to each other. We could never separate. Uh, there was much violence. I would come home at night and next door, they would throw dishes against the wall. The police was constantly over there. I, if I went to my backyard to enjoy the flowers that I planted, uh, the youngest son would be in the backyard smoking marijuana pot and or whatever. And it was just a nightmare being around these people. Well, at the time that I was having all of this this problem with these people, I really got more and more enraged because my value was to own a house is the highest thing a person could do. And here these people were destroying the, my property value because they were, in my words, I thought they were low class. You know, I was very arrogant. And at the time, you know, I was a student of Thich Nhat Hanh. And I thought, oh, I'm a student of Thich Nhat Hanh. And they're just rubbish. <laughs> you know? So I just looked down on them as, oh, these people are just whatever. And you can hear the arrogance in my voice. But this was my mind and the way I thought. And so one day, um, I went to a retreat and, and Thai was teaching us about metta and loving kindness. And he explained the, the practice to us and, uh, and invited us to go out and to practice metta. And so I, he also read a very beautiful poem called, Please Call Me By My True Name. Um, it's a poem that he tell, he's, he's talked about many times of becoming quite in despair when he learned about 
a young girl who committed suicide when she was raped. Um, she threw herself overboard um, on a boat coming from Vietnam to the United States when she was raped by sea pirates. And um, Thich Nhat Hanh talked about writing this poem and getting into the mindset, the life of these pirates and how it is that they came to do this very horrible act to this young girl. So with this, with the poem in my mind and the meta practice that Tai gave us, I started to practice every day. I would read the poem and I would recite the verses. And at first I did it very begrudgingly. I thought, oh, this isn't, why am I wasting my time? But I just kept doing it every day. And then one day I started to think, well, about the DeSalvis next door and how it is they were raised and the father and the mother and all of these different things, the conditions of their life. And I thought, when it got to the point in the meta practice of directing the verses at people you don't like, I thought about the DeSalvis. And, and then immediately I said, no, I can't direct meta to them. I can't offer loving kindness. I don't dislike those people. I hate them. <laughs> and so I still went on about my business for months and months and months, reciting meta and reading the poem. And again, again, the thought came to me, well, what if I were raised by those kinds of parents with that kind of violence? Maybe I would be just like the DeSalvis. And so one day, it was around Christmas time, I was outside my house and an ambulance pulled up next to the DeSalvis' home. And the ambulance was there for the mother uh, to take her to the hospital. So I asked the, the father what, what was happening and uh, he said, oh, she has an incurable disease. That was it. That was his only words. So the next day, I found the biggest point set of plant, a beautiful plant, huge plant, almost bigger than I was. And I went next door. I knocked on the door. And the youngest son, Randy, answered the door. He opened the door. And I said, here, this plant is for your mom. I hope she feels better. Well, he took one look at me. He looked at the plant. He snatched the plant out of my hand. And then he slammed the door in my face. And I stood there with the door slammed in my face. And the feeling of joy came over me. Every cell in my body was ignited with joy and happiness. It was joy, sheer joy. I realized at that moment that I had transformed. And the reason I knew that I had transformed was because I wasn't dependent on them to like me back. I didn't need their they're okay. I didn't need them to like me for me to want to extend love and kindness to them. I was released. I was liberated. That was joy. And that was through the practice of Metta.